Welcome back. Time to look at the week in politics and the announcement this week of the government's charter school policy, rebranded by Education Minister Hikia Parata as Partnership Schools. I'm joined by political journalist Colin James. Morning, Colin. Good morning. The National Party's been trying to introduce some level of change to education for some time now. Have they, yes. in essence, all but got that off the ground now with charter schools? Yeah. Well, they've got one part of it off the ground. In fact, if you look at their education policy in the election, there was an awful lot in it, uh, which they're gradually introducing uh, bit by bit. The motivation for these partnership schools is ideological, uh, coming from the ACT Party, uh, but the justification, I think it's a real justification, is innovation. The question is whether they need these schools to do the innovation or so. Uh, three questions about it. One is uh, they say uh, students will apply, but actually parents will be doing the applying, and I think there'll be a degree of self selection in that. Uh, and uh, the second is, uh, how far are they going to go down the faith-based route? And is that really the sort of thing? It's very American. Uh, is it really uh, New Zealand? And the third is, why can't state, the state system uh, be uh, uh, more innovative and why can't they work through the state system? Is it feasible then, Colin, to, to introduce charter schools within the existing state system? Uh, well, it's feasible to do innovation, and I think there's, there are actually examples of innovation going on. One of the focuses, and John Key says this himself, is principles. There's a lot of evidence that principles make a big difference. So if you put a lot of weight behind good principles, put them on contracts, pay them a lot, that sort of thing, uh, you'll get a lot of innovation anyway. Uh, the second is, if I take the Manaya Kalani project out in uh, East Tamaki, where they're using digital learning, huge improvement in DSAIL 1 area in, in the kids' learning and the parents' involvement, Truancy's dropped to damn near zero. Flexible use of facilities down in Christchurch, likely to be rolled out, I think, across the country. The Comet project down in Monaco, really interesting. Stuart McNaughton's work uh, with teachers in the classroom. All of that uh, suggests a more flexible uh, uh, education system is emerging. And that's one thing I think Labor's got to take on board, that a younger generation of parents are going to want that greater flexibility. OK, touching on uh, Labor there, Colin, a number of their private members' bills have been drawn, paid parental leave, the mundanisation of public holidays, gay marriage. Yeah. These bills, it seems, certainly fuel the theory, don't they, that Labor is something of a party of margins? Yes, uh, uh, and Nick Smith, uh, in his speech to the Contractors Federation, was making that point that National's very happy to have Labor out there on the margins on these topics and not on the core topics, on the nice-to-haves instead of the essentials to have. And that does pose an issue for Labor. My own view is that Labor needs to reapply the first principles uh, to modern conditions. And I think Jacinda Ardern's starting to do that in social welfare. She's getting rid of welfare, talking social security. And then it comes down in the economic sphere to the two Davids. Cunliffe and, and Parker, and how far they can do rethinking. And they are starting to do that, and David Parker's going off on a world tour to talk to uh, eminent economists. We'll see what he comes back with. The issue uh, ga of gay marriage, Colin, has certainly thrown up some interesting debates, quite aside from the issue itself. And uh, my colleague Patrick Gower has been blogging and suggesting that if John Key supports the marriage amendment bill, then that, in effect, empowers the social right, the Conservatives, and, and that would give National a, a stable coalition yes. partner in future. What do you make of that? Well, I, th I think it's um, a long shot. Uh, I don't think that uh, that's uh, John Key's motivation, uh, frankly. I, I think that he is genuinely in the Liberal camp on these issues. Uh, and so I, I wouldn't impute that motive to him. Uh, but yes, it does open up space, uh, a little bit more space. The civil unions opened up the space, after all, uh, uh, for uh, a Colin Craig-type party, and I think you're going to talk to him next uh, to maybe make some ground up. But he's got a long way to go from 2.5% to 5%, and also to get the National Party's backing. All right, Colin James, very much appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.